and tossed a golf ball into the pond. And it made perfectly round ripples that traveled all the way to the farther shores. And I tossed a jagged stone into the pond. And it too made perfectly round ripples that traveled all the way to the farther shores. Next, I found an old sneaker with laces missing, tossed it into the pond, which brought on a thumping splash, causing turtles and geese to turn their heads, but soon lose interest, as it made perfectly round ripples that traveled all the way to the farther shores. Should the deeds we perpetrate here on earth, good or evil, planned or accidental, make perfectly round ripples that travel all the way to the farthest shores of the cosmic sea, so mote it be. We shall, perhaps, receive our due in the perfectly predictable residuum. put a book out a while back, Ebbing and Thibbing. I'm going to read a poem from the book now, called Up Your Sleeve. Life is green on a good day, good for nothing on a stray day, misunderstood on a Monday, beneath the radar by Tuesday, full of promise on a Friday, Full of shit the next day. <laughs> Life is pink at sunrise. Fades to mob when a friend dies. Downright cruel in your sad eyes. Upside down when you're unwise. Life is ripe with free choices. Guidance, globes, and wee voices. A cabinet when you guess right in your face on your next flight, empty as sin in the moonlight, up your sleeve in hindsight. <laughs> so there's the uh, old cliche, two sides to every story. So that the uh, cliche prompted this here next poem. It left the whole tribe spellbound. Moses climbed the mountain to meet up with God, who was hiding in the bushes that caught fire from his searing breath. But hiding in the bushes? Who could have imagined that God would be so shy? But hey, his God gave Moses the laws the tribe must now live by. And they were carved in stone to signify their permanence. Meanwhile, those of us left below felt like we'd been abandoned. Or maybe Moses had an accident as he was gone a long time. And here we are in a strange land with no one to guide us in singing or in praying or even knew the way out of here. So we channeled our energy, holding hands in a willy-nilly spiral that spread over several acres. And the message we received came from the valley below, where a herd of cattle grazed without a care in the world. And we took that as an omen that to allay our fears we must Worship the cow. We commenced to build a fire from the dead wood around us, cast into it our jewelry, which melted rather easily, enabling our inspired sculptors to fashion a golden calf. There was such a work of art, it left the whole tribe spellbound, as we all took turns touching it with vibrations shivering through every man, woman, and child. Indeed, we felt instant jubilation 
And we moved to sing and dance round and round our golden calf. And when you know it, Moses chose this very moment to reappear among us, us having a marvelous time without him. And yikes, did he ever freak out, as anointed leaders are wont to do. And he smashed those tablets containing God's commandments that didn't include merriment, and proceeded to join in the dancing <laughs> while singing all the loudest, seeing the light the brightest, and a never, never promised land could be found wherever we encounter tranquility, even elsewhere in the animal kingdom. Mm -hmm. There's another poem about being spellbound called Urgency I Dread. Puckish kitty dancing on my head with that urgency I dread. Well before the hour I rise from this bed. But look, 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 she said. So I opened my eyes and beheld the dawn blazing through the trees, Murgatroyd red. Ensuing silence eventually tempered by hoarsely whispered Yowza! <laughs> it's so good to be not dead. <laughs> and as for thee, bold kitty, thou shalt now be fed. <laughs> this one's called the gate. The horses are all equal until the starting gate opens. They're bolting in unison as a marvel of choreography. Then freedom kicks in as they set their own pace. Some sprint to the fore, some go for the rail. Some like the space the outside affords. But those in the rear, unsure or cagey. The close pack tends to elongate, approaching the first turn still linked by desire, with a couple of leaders, a pair of trailers, and a half dozen maneuverers strung out in between. Coming around the fire turn, those with a shot emerge neck and neck and neck, digging deeper into puissance only the best possess. Ten horses in the race, all driven to excel. This ain't no democracy settled by ballots, swayed by promises. The winner must earn it with heart and duende, edging out frenetic foes, giving 100%. But whoa, 101% is required to win today. Whoever summons it, and photos don't lie, gets to bow in the circle. As the others pass by, nodding in approbation, while all share in the pride of diligent training, with its own payoff being a position at the gate. Thank you. Looking at old age. <laughs> different directions. <laughs> this is called Gimme Jimmy. Ernie was unhappy for most years of his life. Yet he lived to be a hundred. Was his fate a cruel joke? Millie died at 98 in the Grandview Nursing Home. When no one came to see her, hardly anyone knew she was gone. Solitary Ralph got a lethal injection. A couple of murders he committed, oh, so many years ago. With nary a vigilous chanting in the driving rain. 
They say he read the classics to pass the time away, with a fondness for Melville, Hawthorne, and Poe, yet declined to share any last words with those dying to know the story behind his amused smile. Larry was a jogger who celebrated his 83rd birthday with a jaunt around the pond. Whence he died with his sneakers on, like he always said he wanted to. Indeed, a society of octogenarians, calling themselves the Merry Medheads, <laughs> flaunt their accumulation of decades at all the local parades. But Vincent thumbs his nose and cries, Give me Jimi Hendrix as a role model for my life. He who found true enlightenment before age 27, connecting cosmic dots by listening to Beethoven for guidance and symmetry, then applying it to electric funk, raising the sounds of music to the level of the gods. Give me Joan of Arc while still a teenager, with the integrity to burn for her beliefs. Give me Jesus walking brashly upon the water in his early thirties. Give me the unknown soldier lying in satisfaction these many years, believing he sacrificed his life for a noble cause, and henceforth can do no harm. Give me my old dog Hank, who harassed all authority figures throughout his brief ten-year career before slipping out through the back fence one too many times. So spare me longevity, O oh ye weavers of destiny. Give me insouciant impertinence, wherein I'll paint my masterpiece in the middle of the square, in the middle of the night, to be gaped upon by all when the sun rises in the morn. And I shall fear not the firing squad. I want to digress for a minute before I delve into my sandpaper poems. I possibly rub people the wrong way. My birthday comes a week before Christmas. So I made it a practice on that day to do most of my Christmas shopping, following a noble hobbit tradition of considering one's birthday to be a day for giving rather than receiving. However, not that pure, <laughs> I do treat myself. This last time around, I bought myself this miniature pork pie <laughs> that I'm wearing here tonight. <laughs> And I tried it on in the store. When I looked in the mirror, I thought, I could really impersonate a, po a poet with that hat on. And where you know it, it's working. It's working, it's working. <laughs> All right. This next one's called Never Neither. Everyone wants to be the master. Everyone wants to be the slave. Who'd be so droll as to want neither? Everyone wants to crack the whip. Everyone wants to feel the sting. Nobody wants to feel anxiety. Everyone wants to step on fingers. Everyone wants to be touched. Nobody wants to be a pariah. Everyone wants to be worshipped. Everyone wants to bow down in good company. Nobody wants to grope in the dark. Everyone who breaks his chains and flees forfeits the dream of trading places. That's that one. This is called Can a Mockingbird Mimic an Owl? A stranger arrived at the town meeting, sporting a clean white featherless fedora 
over a venerable black trench coat and began regaling us with his queries. His graffiti, the honest to God art of democracy, is a sweatsuit, the orthodox garb of equality. Is Legos the muse for its spiralist architecture? Is American Idol then its pinnacle? Is voting the sole decider of excellence? Is New Age energy doomed to be ugly? Is antisocial prudent in a dystopian society? Does the head bow down to the feet? Do the feet kick the head down the street? Does the head enjoy the roll? Does it feel at one with the curve? Does the gutter attract or repel? Does enlightenment reside in a golf ball? Why did we drop that second bomb? Oh. Can a mockingbird mimic an owl? Bud Light as good as it gets. <laughs> is daycare an even better deal? Is old age the most prized merit badge? Did a treadmill take you there? Do selfies prove life is good? <laughs> Do cops dream of walking a beat? Do they really prefer shooting a radar gun? Must a senator move to Washington? Must the mayor move from camera to camera? Must the judge surrender his humility? Must the victim surrender his naivete? Must the junkyard dog roll over? Who among us merits no leash? Who denies dabbling in graffiti? At this point, the stranger took his leave. And a motion was made to adjourn the meeting. <laughs> so I have uh, another book uh, written, subtitled uh, Autonomy for Ordinary Personage. <laughs> book about liberty. And the title is taken from this next poem. Gimme liberty I can smell. More gimme gimme. Went down to the sea in my Sunday suit. The surf was resting, the breeze alluring. So I took off my shoes and rolled up my trousers and waded out to my knees. Inhaled my fill of free salt air and cried, Gimme liberty I can smell. Any day I roam the nearby woods, where the scent of pine exalts my spirit, with birds trilling, invisible scurrying, in a daisy-filled meadow where I take my repast, or gazing up at the clouds at large, exclaiming, Give me liberty I can smell. The Declaration of Independence contains mighty fine words, Yet not all words ace olfactory scrutiny, as do those written by Shakespeare ruminating on a rose, or Miss Dickinson taking tea with Mother Nature. Should we the people profess sundry druthers, give me liberty I can smell. We sing the anthem to thrill the ears, while deceiving the heart is the power of the choir. The principle that freedom must be won by war is the staple of the history books. But I ain't craving the freedom of the dead. Give me liberty, I can smell. There must be more to liberty than being free from foreign rule. As our own rulers started diminishing, with them on their way to becoming clones of their foes, leaving me baying at my Betsy Ross flag. Give me liberty, I can smell. <laughs> one more, last one. In the same spirit as the previous one. <laughs> Thanks for having this event here tonight, uh, Catbird Cafe. <laughs> Thanks for coming.
Yeah, this page with other poets and look out at an attentive uh, audience. Alright, this last one. The garden is getting ready to go out in the backyard. It's called the Weeds Manifesto. <laughs> I'm here to tell you, brother, it's tough being a weed. The deck is stacked against us. No one wants us to succeed. We show up uninvited, we grow up unattended. But we survive despite it. We're damn proud of it. While other flowers get fertilized and groomed to be a source of pride, weeds gotta make it on their own. Disrespected by the do-gooders only makes us resolute. As we've got tolerable savvy and impudence to spare. We don't get fed, so we don't get fat. We grow up wild, we grow up fast. 99 proof natural, enhancement free and spiritual. And a weed will never walk alone. <laughs> so bring on the mowers and the movers and the shakers. Bring on the preachers from the twilight zone. We'll dive in all together and clog their sacred wheels. Jam their blue nosed blades and rattle all their bones. Bring on the wind, bring on the rain. We'll dance in a frenzy till the cows come home. Now we lean on one another and sacrifice for common good. But there are no rulers in the weed world. Let that be understood. No mandatory creed. So no fear of heresy. No hesitation to be first in line. Intrepid comes with being free. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you.